Hi everyone, a very good morning to all of you and I welcome you all to the Hindu newspaper analysis discussion. In this particular video, we are going to discuss the entire analysis of Hindu newspaper. We'll take all the articles with respect to the examination and uh, in this particular session, we are not only going to take up the articles, but we are also going to take up the brief background as well as the relevant information that you need for the examination. So let's start with the session and also I would like to tell you that you can download this particular synoptic notes of this entire session from telegram channel link for telegram is given in description box in youtube in every class we start with the gs quotation so let's start the today's session with the gs quotation and these quotations can be used to complement your answers in uh, gs paper number one two three four or in essay so today we'll take quotation from barack obama former president of us so Obama, Barack Obama says, learning to stand in somebody else's shoes to see through their eyes, that's how peace begins. And it's up to you to make that happen. Empathy is a quality of character that can change the world. So Barack Obama is talking about the value of empathy. Now what empathy means? Empathy is, empathy is to sense and understand other people's pain, other people's miseries, other people's concern. Stepping in the shoes of other person and understanding from other person's point of view their problems and concerns that is empathy and this empathy is needed to bring the everlasting peace in the world. Let's take example of recent ongoing Hamas Israel war that is there. Now this is true that Hamas it carried unprovoked attacks against Israel which was purely an act of terrorism it cannot be justified in any capacity but after that, Israel has also started carrying attack on people living in Gaza. Many of attacks have also been carried in on hospitals, which Israel is justifying. But killing of innocent people can never be justified. And in these kind of circumstances, empathy is something that is needed. If that empathy will be there, then everlasting peace can come. So you can use this particular quotation for GS paper number four, answers related to ethics integrity and aptitude okay so this is about the gs quotation for today and now let's take first article that we are going to take up from the newspaper so first article that we'll take is from text and context section of hindu newspaper and the article that we have is the economy of a world without work okay now first of all before going on in this particular article let me give you context of this article and then we'll see utility of this particular article so basically guys what happened recently there was a discussion or a kind of an interview was held okay so recently an interview was held between uk's prime minister mr rishi sunak and elon musk the billionaire and in this particular interview they discussed that what will be the future of ai and in this interview, Elon Musk provided this particular thing. Elon Musk provided this particular thing that in future, in future, AI will replace all types of jobs and there might be no jobs that will be there in the future. So this kind of a viewpoint has been given by Elon Musk here. So on that particular dimension, we are going to discuss that whether this thing can happen, that AI will make all the jobs redundant, will this happen or not? And this particular uh, article, we are going to see with the context of GS paper number three, technologies, technologies and their impact on economy. Technologies and their impact on economy, we'll see this particular article. Okay, just a minute. Okay, so this particular article we are going to see with respect to GS paper number three, uh, technology and technology's impact on economy. Now, before going on in this particular article, guys, there are certain things that I would like to tell you first. First of all, let's understand this and then we'll go in details of this particular article. Let's understand. So basically, guys, when we talk about artificial intelligence, what will be artificial intelligence's impact on the future? There are largely two viewpoints that have been there. Number one viewpoint is a dystopian viewpoint. Dystopian, dystopian viewpoint. 
Now, what is this dystopian viewpoint? Dystopian viewpoint means or dystopian viewpoint provides this particular thing that in future what will happen? AI, robots, they will become superior and they will in a way try to rule humankind and by that particular thing what happened? There will be a very dark kind of a future that will be there. So, AI will lead to a lot of damages. AI will become like God and AI will dominate everything and humans they will be sidelined to the margins. This is the dystopian view of AI, a kind of a negative, a negative perception of AI. Then on another hand, on another hand, there is an optimistic, there is the optimistic view of AI, according to which it is provided that AI will take up menial tasks, AI will make human more efficient, AI will help humans and in many of the capacities. It will help humans in drug discovery, in medicine, in industry, in computing, everywhere. AI will assist humans and more productivity, more efficiency will come. AI will create more jobs, for example, AI programmers, etc. So, the world is divided on two viewpoints. Now, let's discuss this particular article. So, Mr. Elon Musk, what he has said, he has highlighted this particular thing that in future, there will be no need of any kind of a human labor. Neither there will be the need of physical physical labor nor there will be need of cognitive labor. Artificial intelligence will replace all types of labor. So therefore in future, in future there will be no human labor that will be required. Now article is talking about this particular thing whether this is possible. Can this happen that AI will replace all the type of job? Now this does not seem probable that it will happen. Why it will not happen? Because for such kind of a for such kind of a scenario what we need we need to create such kind of artificial intelligence ai which has become self-aware which has become self-aware now guys understand this particular thing what how human intelligence is different from artificial intelligence humans can adapt humans can change humans can question themselves and humans can seek further enhancement, further reforms, they can revise their existing knowledge, humans can do that thing. Can artificial intelligence question itself? Can it update itself? No, it is not there. Today we know this particular thing that there are the programmers who are continuously making changes in the algorithm of artificial intelligence and by that artificial intelligence becomes more efficient. So tomorrow if AI has to replace all kind of human labor then AI should be able to operate autonomously and should be able to maintain itself by itself. If that will happen then only the AI will be able to replace human labor and this particular thing does not seem that it will happen. Moreover, Moreover, guys, there is one very big and a fundamental question that has emerged out of this particular thing. What is the fundamental question that has emerged? Understand this particular thing. It is said that if human, uh, if human work will be taken by AI and if there is no need for humans to do any physical labor or cognitive labor, then what will be future of work? Is this desirable to humans themselves or not? Now, in this context, there are two viewpoints that we are going to take. One viewpoint is of the economist Keynes. Now, you might be knowing about the uh, KM, uh, you might be knowing about the Keynes. Now, when we talk about the Keynes, so Keynes has provided this particular thing. Now, first of all, he has been a big time appreciator of capitalism. He has appreciated capitalism, that capitalism can improve the quality of life of the people. Now, Keynes provide this particular thing that, provide this particular thing, that physical work is a kind of a drudgery. Menial work, physical work, repetitive work. What it does, it strips human of their imagination. It strips human of their creativity. It is said that working continuously makes human tired. It is menial work which makes human unproductive, which makes human uninnovative. And Mr. Keynes provided this particular thing that we want to achieve, attain such kind of a setup where humans have to work for less and less hours. Because if human will work less hours, they will be able to spend more time in leisure. They will be more innovative, more creative. And Keynes has this particular belief that capitalism, capitalism can bring eventually, capitalism can bring technologies and through that particular technologies work will become more efficient and humans need to do less and less work it will free human of the labor so Keynes has appreciated a future where human labor should go down but at the same time we have Karl Marx we have Karl Marx 
Now, Marx's idea is this. Now, Marx's idea is opposite of Keynes' idea. Karl Marx provides this thing that human life gets purpose, gets meaning by work. Okay. He provides this particular thing that when a human is making something, when human is doing some work, that work is the source of contentment. Karl Marx provides this particular thing. The essence of humanity lies in our ability to materially manipulate the nature. We want to materially manipulate nature. We want to make something which does not exist in nature. For example, nature has trees, but nature has not made a table. Nature has not made a chair. I want to cut, I want to manipulate the wood in such a way that I make a table out of that, I make a chair out of that and when I see to that my creation, I feel contentment, I feel satisfaction. So, work is something which gives us satisfaction, meaning and purpose in the life. Now see, Karl Marx has also criticized capitalism, you know this particular thing that Karl Marx's life objective was the criticism of capitalism, he has, now what Karl Marx says, Karl Marx says that capitalists, what do they do? They use human labor for material benefit of themselves. They don't make people do work so that they can feel contented about their work. Rather, human's worth is being seen only by how much work they can do. This is something that is negative. Capitalists, they try to exploit human only for their labor. Okay, they want to make humans do those kind of works repeatedly in which humans even don't get a lot of fun. Okay, so this is something. But according to Karl Marx, he provides this particular thing that one's labor is the source of one's satisfaction and contentment. And then this particular capacity, and then this particular capacity, this viewpoint is not appreciated that AI will replace all kind of human labor. Okay, now moving on in this particular capacity guys. So basically further what uh, issue comes here in this particular direction. Now guys when we talk about when we talk about the viewpoint of both Keynes as well as Karl Marx it has certain limitations it has certain problems. Let's understand these particular limitations and problems that are there in this particular direction. Just a minute. Okay, so let's understand the limitations that are there in this particular direction. So limitations that are there is number one, when we talk about the Keynes viewpoint, Keynes viewpoint, okay. So basically understand Keynes says that working or doing the labor is not desirable, but understand that when people is going to a workplace is doing work, by that work, a person is able to make social networks, a person is able to make social connections and that social connection, social networks are very important for socialization of human being. So it is very important. Second thing, when we talk about the Marx view, Marx says that Human labor is instrumental. Human labor should never be divorced. So by that particular thing, we cannot conceptualize any kind of a future without work at the center. So both have its limitations because both are at the extreme ends. But guys, if we see the present system, present system, if AI will replace all kind of labor, if AI will replace all kind of a job, there will be many practical problems that will emerge in this particular scenario. Number one, understand this thing, going to work, doing some job, is not only for my spiritual satisfaction, but it is also for my economic well-being. Because I am doing doing the job, I am able to get food, I am able to get shelter, I am able to get clothing. So if AI will replace all the jobs and if human will not be doing any work, the question that comes here is that, question that comes here is that how the people will be able to access basic resources, okay? In this particular scenario, in this particular scenario, what can be done? There could be just one arrangement that can be made. And what is this arrangement? Arrangement that is there is that we need to come out with a system where surplus that is being generated by artificial intelligence, that surplus is to be transferred to the people. There should be a kind of a universal basic income that should be given to every person so that people can afford the basic goods and basic services. But in this particular capacity, again, certain practical problems will emerge. What practical problems will emerge? For example, uh, for example, 
what will determine the amounts that individual received you will receive 500 rupees i will receive 1000 rupees how to decide that what money you will receive what money i will receive okay what determines the division of the net product between those who own the machines and those who don't own suppose you are the owner of google i don't own any such kind of a thing so how much you will get how much i will get these particular things will be there so this is something guys that is open to debate now this particular article can be used also for essay because in essay now abstract topics philosophical topics and all such kind of things have started to emerge so even in essay we can use this particular article now moving on to next article moving on to next article what india can expect from the rashtriya vigyan puraskar awards now this particular article guys we are going to see with respect to gs paper number 3 issues related to science and technology and in this particular article science awards we are going to discuss okay let's start with the discussion even some of information in this particular article can be used for our prelims examination also so let's start with the discussion so basically guys uh, and by the way if you are following our newspaper analysis regularly two three times we have discussed this particular development earlier also so you might be knowing this particular thing that recently recently csir that is council of scientific and industrial research they have announced the winners of shanti swarup bhatnagar award for 2022 now what is shanti swarup bhatnagar awards these are the Uh, these are the distinguished awards that are given in the domain of science okay now what has happened recently government also announced that the governor government is thinking restructuring of the science awards right now guys in india more than 300 different different types of science awards are given and government said that we need to we need to restructure these 300 science awards and what has happened governor government recently has come out with rashtriya vigyan puraskars what is rashtriya vigyan puraskar under rashtriya vigyan puraskar government had said that these are the categories of science awards that will be given to the scientists academicians and scholars and earlier 300 plus type of science awards will be replaced there will be there will be vigyan shri vigyan yuva shanti swarup bhatnagar award that will be given vigyan team award which will be given to the team collaboration team innovations and then there will be the vigyan ratna these are the four type of awards that will be given now for science cash reward will not be given only a citation and a medallion will be there cash rewards have also been removed now government had said this particular thing that these rashtriya vigyan puraskars will be kept on par with the padma awards and other rational awards that have been there and these rashtriya vigyan puraskars will be given in 13 scientific domains what are these 13 scientific domains i have given here let's see them for example basic sciences applied sciences medicine engineering within these there will be the 13 sub categories that have been there moreover guys whenever we talk about the science awards even in the nobel prizes this particular criticism has been there this particular criticism has been there many a number of a times and criticism is something like this that the women have not been properly represented women have not been properly represented so in these particular awards it will also be focused that there should be gender parity there should be gender parity moreover guys in this particular capacity in this particular capacity it has been said that as the padma awards is there so for a particular time duration for a particular time window uh nominations or nominations are invited and on the base out of those nominations there will be certain names that will be selected now what has happened what has happened like the padma awards for rashtriya vigyan puraskar also nominations will be accepted and out of those nominations that have been received certain people or certain uh, scientists they will be shortlisted for these awards so there will be an rashtriya vigyan puraskar committee this particular committee will comprise the principal scientific advisor to the government of india principal scientific advisor to the government of india second secretaries of science department will be there number 3 members of science and engineering academies will be there and noted science scientist technology scholars will be there they will be in the rashtriya vigyan puraskar committee rashtriya vigyan puraskar committee and they will shortlist that who will be given 
द राष्ट्रीय विज्ञान पुरस्कार आई हैव टोल्ड यू ऑलरेडी देर आर दीज फोर कैटेगरीज सो हु विल गेट वट प्राइज इट इज गोइंग टू डिसाइड मोर ओवर इन दीज पर्टिक्युलर प्राइजेस इट हैज ऑल्सो बीन प्रोवाइडेड दैट देयर इज अ नो एज लिमिट only one prize is there where there is an age limit of 45 years that is vigyan yuva vigyan yuva shanti swarup bhatnagar award yuva means young so maximum age of 45 years is there <laughs> excuse me apart from that there is no age limit that has been prescribed for these particular awards now guys why it is important it is important because there has been the gender bias and there have been the ageism issue that has been there we have seen this particular thing that most of the times uh, the science awards they have been given to the to the scientists and scholars who are pretty old young scientists and scholars have not got these particular awards so this particular thing would would be would be reformed then guys also it has been provided that these rashtriya vigyan puraskars can also be given to the person of indian origin who are living abroad we know this particular thing that india's uh, indian people of indian origin who are living in other countries they have done so much of scientific innovations and they have contributed so much in the science so in order to appreciate their contributions also they can also be given already i have told you that cash prizes have been removed only the certificate and medallion will be given so this is guys all about these particular prizes i hope that you have understood it and now we'll be moving to next article now we'll be moving to next article okay center to invite bids for center to invite bids for 20 critical mineral blocks okay uh, this particular article guys we are going to see with respect to gs paper number 3 gs paper number 3 mineral exploration economy okay let's discuss about this particular article okay now now let's discuss this particular article first of all guys before going on in this particular article i would like to explain you some basic background information now there are some additional things that i have provided here you provide uh, uh, written in this red color very important for your examination let's understand this basic information because only when you know it this article will make sense for you okay so basically guys what happened few months back few months back government has come out with an amendment government has come out with an amendment that is an amendment in mines and an amendment in mines and minerals development and regulation amendment uh, mines and mineral development and regulation act now this is an act of 1957 it has recently been amended and it has been amended through mmdr amendment bill 2023 okay so this amendment has recently come now what has happened through this particular amendment guys six minerals which were earlier in the list of atomic mineral list these particular minerals have been moved to the list of they have been moved to the list of critical minerals critical minerals now guys understand this particular thing basically when we talk about atomic minerals atomic minerals can only be exploited by okay department uh, can all be only be exploited by the government and in that particular field department of atomic energy is something which plays the most important role private parties private companies private explorers they are not allowed to mine or they are not allowed to commercially use the those minerals which are listed into the atomic mineral list okay from this atomic mineral list six minerals have been moved have been taken out and their status has been changed to the critical minerals okay now first of all what are these critical minerals what are these six minerals which have been moved to the list of critical minerals so they are lithium beryllium niobium titanium tantalum zirconium okay previously they were reserved for only the government entities now private parties can explore them can mine them can study them okay this is something that happened already by this mines and mineral development and regulation amendment bill 
ओके दिस इज समथिंग दैट हैज हैपन नाउ गाइज दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल स्टार्ट नाउ वट गवर्नमेंट हैज डन गवर्नमेंट हैज सेट दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट वी विल इन्वाइट द बिड्स फ्रॉम द प्राइवेट पार्टीज फाइन टू एक्सप्लोर ट्वेंटी क्रिटिकल मिनरल ब्लॉक्स सो अक्रॉस द कंट्री ट्वेंटी ब्लॉक्स दे हैव आइडेंटिफाइड एंड दो ट्वेंटी ब्लॉक्स प्राइवेट पार्टीज विल बी अलाउड टू एक्सप्लोर सो दैट दे कैन फाइंड द सुटेबल रिजर्व ऑफ लिथियम एंड ग्रेफाइट लिथियम एंड ग्रेफाइट नाउ गाइज वेन वी टॉक अबाउट लिथियम यू नो दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट लिथियम प्लेज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल इन द बैटरीज इन द लिथियम आयन बैटरीज ओके वेन वी टॉक अबाउट द i electronic cars in that lithium plays a very important role and lithium has also been called as the white gold and few months back in jammu and kashmir in jammu and kashmir in raisi region there was a lithium that was also found so for better exploration of lithium and graphite 20 blocks will be given to private parties and they will carry their exploration okay so this will help india to explore these strategic minerals which play a very important role in the energy transition as well as india want to achieve net zero emissions by 2070 and for that particular thing renewable energies are to be developed and for renewable energies these particular minerals and metals are very important okay so that is all guys about this particular article fine i hope that you have understood this thing okay moving on moving on to the next article okay uh and guys whatever the questions are there you please post your questions or doubts i will take all the doubts and questions towards the end of this particular session okay the qatar death row and india's options india's options now we'll take this particular article with respect to the gs paper number 2 international relations and international affairs international relations and international affairs now this particular this particular development concerns to the india qatar relations so guys recently what happened recently what happened a local court in qatar a local court in qatar okay has awarded death penalty to eight of the former indian navy officers now these officers now are right now they are not with indian navy right now they were working with a company in qatar and it has been alleged that they have passed on certain in for uh, basically they have uh, they uh, basically it has been provided that they have carried the espionage and for that particular thing charges have been levied on them and death penalty has been given to them and now now this particular thing comes in news that what options india has now earlier also similar situations have happened for example you might be knowing about the kulbhushan jadhav case of 2017 so kulbhushan jadhav was given death penalty by pakistan said that he is working for india and espionage charges were levied on kulbhushan jadhav this particular thing also happened at that point of a time what happened india approached the international court of justice and india said that pakistan has violated the article 36 of vienna convention now what happened pakistan did not inform informed india about this particular development okay consular access was not given to india fine uh, if, if, okay and all this particular thing happened in a very opaque manner a transparency was not there in this entire trial so india approached international court of justice and what happened icj icj ordered the pakistan to review the process of jadhav's trial and conviction now this particular case has come now article is talking about the options that india has in this particular situation so what options india has okay what options what options india has in this particular capacity okay so number 1 so number 1 india has the option to initiate legal appeals within the qatari legal system for example guys if sessions court has given the verdict you can approach the higher courts if for example you can approach the high court if high court has given the verdict you can approach the supreme court in the same way we can explore the internal legal remedies within the qatar internal legal remedies within the qatar this is something that can happen secondly guys what is there in 2015 india and qatar both have signed an agreement pertaining to the transfer of sentenced prisoners qatari people who have been given punishment in india they can be transferred to qatar and within qatar's jail they will spend their tenure and the people of india who have been sentenced in qatar they could be taken back to india and within indian jails they will spend their 
tenure. So this agreement has been signed between India and Qatar in 2015. And as a part of this particular agreement, India can br bring back these uh, former Indian Navy personnel back and they can serve their sentence in India. Third, third option is there. Third option is there. See, if, if Qatar is not agreeing on their 2000 and uh, if, if, is not agreeing to send the to send them back as per this 2015 agreement or if the legal remedies don't work or if in fair manner legal remedies are not being given to india india then what can happen india can turn to international court of justice now guys understand this thing we have the vienna convention vienna convention on consular relation now this vienna convention on consular relations provides the framework of consular relations between the two countries and if india finds that this particular matter is not handled properly or diplomatically india can approach the icj under the vienna conventions violation this is something that india can do then guys fourth option that india has fourth option that india has is that actually there are many of the global human right organizations that are actually working against the unlawful imprisonment capital punishment and other violations of human right for example amnesty international is there fine which is working for this particular thing so th with the help of this india can make their case strong international mobilization can be arranged by the india and then guys finally one more option india has so india and qatar they have deep economic ties for example for example when we talk about the qatar qatar is the largest provider of liquefied natural gas to india also large number of indians are also living in qatar and they send 750 million dollar of remittances back to india and these people are working in a lot of industries in the qatar so because of this strong lobby that india has in the qatar we can we can use this particular indian lobby in qatar also economic relations economic relations to exert the pressure on qatari government to adopt a more lenient viewpoint so these are the options of india in this particular situation okay so this is guys all about it i hope that you have understood it and now moving to the next article okay <clears throat> A Norwegian perspective of India's digital journey. Now, guys, this particular article has been written by Annie Beth, who is the Norwegian Minister of International Development. Annie Beth, Norwegian Minister of International Development. And in this particular article, she has appreciated India of the digital goods digital public infrastructure that India has developed and how that can help for achieving the sustainable developmental goals. This particular article we are going to see with respect to GS paper number three issues related to Indian economy as well as uh, in the example of digital public infrastructure even a simple question such as what is digital public infrastructure could be asked in your examination. So let's understand this particular article now. So article provides that when we talk about sustainable developmental goals when we talk about the sustainable development goals so leaving no one behind and leaving no one behind is a powerful promise on which it, it is a powerful promise or it is a powerful premise on whose on which sustainable developmental goals are based means sustainable developmental goals core pillar is inclusivity everybody should be provided the benefit of development now it article provides that India has very constructively used the digital public infrastructure. Now, first of all, what is digital public infrastructure? These are those digital applications, digital platforms, which are helping a people to get the government services, government goods, or are helping to improve the quality of governance. For example, guys, we have Aadhaar. So what is Aadhaar? Aadhaar is a digital ID. Aadhaar is a digital ID. Okay. And this is a common identity which is used in a lot of services. Aadhaar can be used for your passport verification. Aadhaar can be used for grain distribution. Aadhaar can be used for income tax returns. Multiple services can be accessed by a common identity that is Aadhaar card. After that guys, there is a UPI. So unified payment interface, it is again one more digital platform by which you can transfer money with a seamless effort only by knowing the 
another person's virtual private identity or by knowing the person's mobile number you can transfer the money then there was the Coven, okay, Coven platform that was there for vaccine management. Arogya Setu was there for contact tracing. Okay, Digi, Digi Locker is there for the management of government issued documents. Okay, so all these are the examples of platforms or these are the examples of applications, digital applications which are improving the governance or which are improving the accessibility of government services for the common citizens. Now, it is provided this particular thing that when we talk about India, now here they are talking about the India's digital identity that has been given to the citizens and by this particular identity people are accessing social services, they are accessing grains, they are accessing hospital admissions and a lot of things. So this is one. Secondly, this is talking about the Aadhaar. Second guys, within now recently you know this particular thing that India has presided over the G20 presidency and within this G20 presidency, India India showed to the entire world that how India has progressed onto the digital goods and it also nudged the other countries also that they should use the digital technologies to provide the good quality of governance to people. Okay. Then further moving on guys, after that, now the digital goods or digital applications which India has made, India is not using it only for itself, rather they are being made available to the other world countries also. For example guys, Around 97 million people in Morocco, Togo, Sri Lanka, Philippines, they are receiving the identity, they are using the ID, fine, which is uh, basically, they are using modular open source identity platform, which has been made by India for identification. Okay, then guys, when we talk about the Norway, so as the article is written by the Norway's minister, so she is saying that the Norway is also playing a very important role in a digital public infrastructure. So she says this particular thing that Norway also has recently joined a 50 in 5 campaign. 50 in 5 campaign. Now this 50 in 5 campaign was launched by the DPGA and United Nations. Now what is the DPGA? United Nations already you know. DPGA, DPGA stands for Digital Public Goods Alliance. Digital Public Goods Alliance and what it is? It is a multi-stakeholder initiative. Many countries... Uh, many state, many governments, many non-governmental organizations, they are the part of this Digital Public Goods Alliance and it has a mission to accelerate the attainment of sustainable developmental goals in low and middle income countries by facilitating discovery, development and use of digital public goods. So, they want to develop such digital technologies which can help in the accessing of social goods, which can help in accessing the social public goods. Okay, now basically it has been provided that as a part of this DPGA, all the participating countries, what they will do, they will contribute at least one digital product which can be used by the entire world. For example, India is giving the Aadhaar ecosystem to many countries. India is also has is signing the agreement with other countries to use their UPI. So as India is giving to the world UPI Aadhaar, in that way, all the countries who are the part of this DPGA within next five years, they will give one digital product that can be used by all the countries. And in that capacity, Norway has provided Norwegian Meteorological Services YR. What it is? It is used to forecast the weather around the world so that better predictions of tsunami, flood, etc. can be made. Also, also for plant health, they have provided VIPS, WIPS, which is being, being used over 20 years in Norway as well as now being implemented in Malawi, Africa. This can give better information about the crop, crop's health, if the crop might face some kind of a damage because of the natural or some other reasons, so they can give the early warning. So this is the way as how Norway is helping and how India is helping. So this is guys all about this particular article. I hope that you have understood it. And now moving to next article. Okay, uh, the Bihar caste survey and the social justice agenda. Now guys, I have provided though the entire notes of this particular article, but frankly speaking, article is not providing that much of relevant substance for the examination. Okay, so I will not advise you to go too much in deep in this particular article. So as we have this particular article, so article is talking about a recent development that has happened in Bihar. So guys, already we have discussed it also, you knowing it also and I'll tell you also. Recently, Bihar government, they had carried the caste survey and as per the caste survey, they have tried to 
calculate the number of backward classes people that are there in Bihar and they have estimated that 63% of backward class people are there in Bihar. But when we talk about the reservation for the backward classes, reservation for backward classes is just 27%. Now Bihar government is providing that as 63% people in Bihar are from backward classes, they want that more reservation should be given to the backward classes. And Bihar has announced that the reservation for backward classes will be increased to 65%. Presently it is 27%. Now it is being said that this is nothing new that Bihar is doing. Bihar is just what Bihar is doing. Bihar is just using the old tricks that have been there for the political mobilization. Okay, that is using the caste for the political mobilization. You will increase the reservation for OBC people, more people will get mobilized because as people will get more reservation, they will feel politically loyal towards the government which implemented the reservation. Now, article provides that when we talk about the 20th uh, social justice, the uh, article said that social justice in 20th century was different, but social justice in 21st century is different. Okay, so social justice in 21st century. Okay, social justice in 21st century. Let's discuss this particular thing. So basically, guys, the article says this thing that when we talk about the present time, in present times we see this particular thing that new liberal policies of the government they have not helped. What is new liberal policies of the government? Neoliberal policies are those policies of the government where government encourage more and more private sectors participation. More and more private sectors participation will be encouraged. Those type of policies are called as neoliberal policies. It has been provided that we have given so much of free hand to the private sector that today just 8% jobs, 8% jobs, even less than 8% of the jobs are in the formal sector. Private sector was given free hand okay they were allowed to hire and fire at their own will so around 92 percent jobs fine when we have in india they are of informal nature what are informal jobs informal jobs are the ones where there is no written agreement between the employee and employer whenever employee wants it can he can remove the employer and why these so many jobs 92 percent jobs are of informal nature because government is not regulating that particular area okay so because informal jobs are there formal jobs are not there people are not getting the decent work okay people are not getting the decent work and in this capacity reservation work in government jobs work in government sector gives people a kind of an assurance so therefore this is something that is happening okay then guys it is talking about that today in india India is being ruled by authoritarian cult Hindu ideology has emerged which is sidelining the minority all such things are there you can read it but guys for examination such outright criticism of government that government is promoting Hindu ideology government basically the government is ruling as a cult which is not allowing any all such kind of a things are there further is it clear or not fine Moving to the next article, not that much important for examination guys because understand this thing, this uh, see in Hindu newspaper and even uh, very routine these particular things are coming in the newspaper that prime minister is not allowing the opposition, government is not allowing the opposition, that kind of a viewpoints, no need to go too much in detail. Okay, moving on. Moving on. Army holds a study to address suicides, fratricides in force. Guys, what is fratricide? Fratricide is when the army personnel kill the people of their own side, kill their, um, when the force kills their own members, okay, or when, a, when the brothers kill each other, that is called as fratricide. Now, we find this particular thing that in the armed forces, in the past, there have been increasing cases of suicides and fratricides. There was one particular case of fratricide also happened. What happened? So in October 2023, okay, a major of a Rashtri Rifles unit deployed in Jammu and Kashmir uh, took a grenade and opened fire on the personnel of his own unit. This is an example of fratricide. And suicides have also increased. Now why these particular cases are there? These cases are there. It is because of the increasing psychological stress which is often there in the army personnel. And for that particular thing, what is happening? What is happening? The army has launched a study in collaboration with the Defense Institute of Psychological Research to assess the mental health of the troops as well as their family so that such kind of incidents don't happen. Just this is that you need to read. If a kind of a question is coming, just as an example or a case study, you need to add it. 
ओके एंड नाउ टेकिंग ऑफ द मेन्स क्वेश्चन टूडे सो क्वेश्चन इज वट डू यू मीन बाई डिजिटल पब्लिक इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर Explain how India's digital public infrastructure is helping to enhance governance and social justice. GS paper number two, ten marker question. So that is all, guys, about it. And now let's take the questions that are there. Sir, uh, how can a decreased hour of work lead to increased creativity? Isn't it vice versa, Satyam? Please explain. Okay, the Satyam's question. Okay, guys, you tell me. You are reading for ten hours continuously. You are studying for ten hours continuously, and you are working for two three hours. then you take a break okay or just my question is working in short burst and working for a long duration what happens when you are working for excessively long hours you are you become more creative and creative creative you become more focused but after a particular time your focus your attention and your creativity starts to decline why you need breaks because you say that i am getting saturated now nothing is going in my mind okay so that is the point that for working long hours reduces the creativity reduces the innovation are you understanding it or not now see for example you are doing physical labor let's say i am breaking this wall if i have to break this wall the number of hours i will use my hammer i will able to achieve the progress but when the cognitive work is there mental work is there over a period of time my efficiency will reduce this is the view point that is there sir isn't mining and exploration of lithium ore dangerous to human life and also for the environment as it needs more water and releases more carbon into the atmosphere yes on environmental point of view exploration of any mineral not lithium but any mineral is damaging to environment but at the same time at the same time you need these minerals because how you will satisfy the appetite of the growing economy then so for poverty poverty alleviation for the economic growth this is needed and this will always be a trade off that will be there Does increasing reservation for caste solve the caste issue in India? Won't it increase the divide of caste in the country? As general caste won't get much opportunities. Okay, now there is not a simple answer to this particular question. Understand this thing. It is being said now. First of all, there we use the word general, but general is a misnomer. There is nothing as general. There are the reserved categories, and then there are the unreserved categories that are there. Understand this thing. When we talk about the unreserved categories, okay. or the people who are out of the obc sc st fold those people who are out of the obc sc st fold now what has happened on one hand the political opinion is that that such people constitute around 15 to 20% of the entire population only according to them 70 to 75% population is of actually of the obc sc and st classes and when 50% seats are unreserved okay it is injustice for the scsts and obc because their population is more reservation that have been give, given to them that is less this is a view point okay which is there okay i hope that you have understood it i am not justifying anything i am not saying that this is right that is right but this is a view point that is there okay so that is all guys about it i hope that you have understood it and this is with this we come to an end to the today's session and guys if you have liked the video please do hit the like button 